Hey friends, so last time we touched on archaeological excavation and all of the various techniques used for that. But now we have to talk about like the daily routine of an archaeologist, like the daily nitty gritty stuff that you do while excavating on site. And this includes not just, you know, excavation, but it also in includes documentation and artifact recovery. As a disclaimer, this can vary a lot from site to site, from country to country, from season to season. So this video is just kind of like a general overview on how to approach this whole thing like an actual excavation site and what you're doing so take everything I say with a grain of salt and always make sure you're doing your research and making sure that you're listening to your site supervisors whenever you're excavating because they will be doing different things let's not even talk about like the different type of site you were digging everything varies in archaeology but this is like the super basics of everything that you need to know all throughout the dig there are daily documents that are being being filled out either by yourself, your fellow archaeologists, your trench supervisor, all of those kinds of people. But the trench supervisor is kind of those people, the people that are most in charge of all of this official documentation. They are continuously recording what the excavators are doing throughout the entire dig. So at the beginning of the day, usually there is a picture of the site or of your area for your supervisor being taken to see what it's like before you actually start digging, before you start taking everything away. After the photo, measurements are taken for the top height. The top height is actually like the height of the ground before you start digging. So after the day is over, you then do another height measurement and that's going to show you how far down you've dug throughout the day. For taking these measurements, you use either a DGPS or a total station, which are very, very similar. Based ones that I've used, it's like a total station has two things. So one person taking levels, one person measuring. DGPS can kind of just be one person. It's a little bit more high tech and much more expensive. Your trench supervisor will also then assign you your pottery buckets or your find bags, anything like that, everything with a label. And this is for when you are digging. So that way, everything that you find in your square, in your section, is labeled correctly. So there's a bag or a bucket or a label that says exactly where it came from. And that's very, very important. So you get new ones every day because the date's also put on it so you can see when it was dug up and you can correlate with other layers, things like that. So this part of the documentation is super, super important. Always keep your own fine bags. If you find something in someone else's square, make sure that it goes in their fine bags or their fine buckets and not your buckets. The trench supervisors will also make drawings at various times throughout the day. You might also be making drawings throughout the day as well of what's going on depending on what you are finding. And of course, during all of this, there is digging going on. There is excavation happening live in your face all the time. Pickaxes, trowels, shovels, whatever you use, it's happening. Of course, when you get to a new layer or you find something of importance that's in situ or anything at all, you have to be contacting your trench supervisor. So that means, you know, just letting them know what's happening, what's going on. Then of course, if you get a new layer, you get a new fine bucket or a new fine bag, or you get a new label for things. So you need to make sure there's always, you know, communication going on with your supervisor. Also, if you find like a special find, you're going to need a point taken for it, things like that. I'll see what they want to do. If they want to keep it in the ground, uh, take it out of the ground after a while, you always have to be talking with them and communicating with them. Maybe they don't want to dig into this stratigraphic layer yet. So also you don't want to like just keep going into a new stratigraphic graphic layer without them saying so. They might move you to a different spot, articulate something. It's a complicated process. It's a very busy day. And so just make sure that you are not digging through anything that you shouldn't. Then at the end of the day, you know, you could do a nice little sweep up, you clean up the site, and then you take another photo to show you what it looks like at the end of the day. You take the bottom height to see how far you've dug down, everything like that. The finds are then transported back to the dig house or the lab and then they're going to be transferring all of these handwritten documents and everything like that into a computer into an online database for safekeeping and to keep everything kind of in one spot. So in regards to the different types of sites, if you are digging either a single period Neolithic or a Paleolithic site, for example, you're going to want to document everything to the exact location where it was found because these sites are very fragile and there's usually not as much material culture found within these sites. We need to be very careful with the context that everything is found in. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that you're sieving everything as well to make sure that you're not missing anything, any little things that could pop up in there, small beads, shells, tiny animal bones, everything like that. If you're doing more urban archeology span on the other hand, your excavation methods and how your day is gonna look is gonna be very different 
different from a Paleolithic and Neolithic early Bronze Age site. It's a little bit more difficult there because a lot more is being found. You'll have to be a lot more selective with what you document and what you keep, as well as how much you're actually going to sieve. You know, in Oman, we were sieving everything. Every bucket was being sieved. Your sieving will vary drastically based on the site and the time of the site and the context of the site. You know, exactly. If it's a city, if it's urban landscape, you're not going to be sieving as much unless you're looking specifically for fine flora or fauna. Also, for example, it's very unlikely that you're going to be finding anything of major organic importance from the dirt taken above a road but for example if you find a big pot maybe with some soil in it or a pit or something you're probably going to want to sieve that because for the pot for example there might be like seeds or grains or anything like that and you want to make sure that you are not just like dumping that dirt out so you're going to want to make sure you're carefully excavating certain areas you have to be very picky and very selective of what you're doing once you find an artifact you're going to want to record its provenience measure its depth and coordinates give it a number and place it in a find bag. Of course you're not doing this with every artifact no matter where you are but these are usually reserved for the, the special finds for example. So if you find like a coin, maybe like a, a very complete pot, you'll be finding a lot of tiny bits of broken pottery, you're gonna find a lot of tiny bones, you're not gonna be wanting a point for everything. Because also if you have too many points on a map and you're tagging and you're pointing everything, you're not even gonna get through a proper square meter of digging with like one layer ever and then the map uh, when you look at it is just gonna be a mess and overwhelming and full of useless information that's not going to help your archaeological interpretation at all. That being said, we don't want to just like discard all of that excess pottery that we are picking up. If it's of a decent size and it could be diagnostic, it gets put in your pottery bucket or your big find bag, for example. Rule of thumb usually is that like tiny piece of pottery like the size of your thumbnail is not worth it unless you are digging in a site where pottery is very rare. So example, like if you're at like an early site and pottery isn't normally found at the site, but then you find like a tiny, tiny shirt, that's very important. But if you're at a classical Greek site and you find a piece of pottery that's this big, for example, you're not gonna wanna keep that. Maybe this big, yeah, you can keep that. If it's this big, yeah, maybe, but like this, like, no. Just all these finds are then brought back to the excavation house or to the lab. They are washed, they're weighed, and they are sorted. And this happens in different ways based on your site. Everyone has their own ways of documenting, sorting. But the generic rule of thumb is that you will clean it with pottery, you will wash it, and then you sort it and then you will document it. A lot of them as well are numbered and weighed, and of course, they're all kept with their labels. So things from different squares are not getting mixed up. Everything is kept separate. Of course, then special finds have their own sort of processes afterwards as well. They are individually numbered. They are kept separate. They are taken care of in a very special way. So again, we're, we're talking like architectural features, carved stone, grinding stones, beads, jewelry, metal coins, things like that. Those are all kept in a very separate way and they're done whatever way that the site chooses to sort out with their special finds. Of course, there are other things that we find that we actually can't remove from the site for analysis or working that way including things like features and structures and you know pits and post holes all this both immaterial and material things that we cannot work with in the lab that means we have to do all of the documentation on site detailed photographs have to be made as well as written descriptions and scaled drawings you want to do the same thing with the vertical profiles to see all of the different layers as well as what could be inside them and of course you also want to do over overhead drawings and photographs to make sure you're getting an entire detailed overview of the site. We do these in person and nowadays we even use drones to fly over to take really super detailed photos and then we can do 3D reconstructions afterwards as well which is like really cool. Digital archaeology is a new field that's popping up and it's like it's awesome. So there you go that's basically the practices and protocols that are followed on an archaeological excavation. Don't forget that all of this can vary based on where you are so do your research listen to everyone who's dug there before or who your trench supervisor is to make sure that you are following the rules if you liked that video go ahead and smash that like button down below don't forget to subscribe to my 
channel. And if you like the channel and you want to support it in a different way, go on over to Patreon and become a patron over there. You'll get some amazing behind the scenes photos, behind the scenes videos. You get to vote on what videos that I'm going to be putting out. And you might even get your name on the screen. Like these amazing people over here. Here are all of my socials if you want to follow me around. And as always, stay dirty, my friends.